From the years 2016 to 2023, Scott Foster was voted as the worst referee in the NBA by NBA players. With that said, the NBA still seems to see him as one of their best. But why? In 2007, Foster was exposed as the ref who received 134 phone calls from disgraced referee Tim Donahue between October 2006 and April 2007. And despite these claims, he received no punishment at all. And as his career in the NBA progressed, he slowly began gaining more attention for questionable on-court decisions, especially with his absurd referee player rivalry with Chris Paul. Today, in 20 playoff games that CP3 has played with Foster officiating, Paul has gone 3 and 17. But it's not just CP. Players like James Harden and Paul Pierce have publicly criticized the attitude of Foster, with Harden even claiming he shouldn't be a ref at all, not to mention officiating some of the most important games in the postseason. But how? How can this happen? How can one of the worst NBA referees still be such a valued official in the NBA? These are just some of the many questions we'll be covering as we look back at the career of the extender. Welcome to Sportsphere. Let's get into it. They're having a lengthy conversation right now. Don't use the tech to get your point across. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing with it. I'm sure I see him in a game seven soon. That's <laughs> how it always works out with him. Scott Foster was born in April 1967 in Silver Spring, Maryland. Foster was a referee for six years of high school basketball before refereeing for two years in the CBA in college basketball before entering the NBA in 1994. Foster largely stayed under the radar early on in his career and only seemed to start gaining attention when fellow referee Tim Donahue was under investigation for some serious suspicions. In 2007, Tim Donahue was investigated for suspicion of match fixing and even later admitted to gambling on games where even he was a ref. And how Foster relates to this is because Foster was the official who received 134 phone calls from Donahue between October 2006 and April 2007, which Donahue later reluctantly admitted to. Foster is heavily linked to this incident, especially when considering Donahue didn't call any other official more than 13 times, while calling Foster a total of 134 times. Not to mention, Donahue's calls to Foster took place immediately before and after games Donahue was officiating, 54 times. However, Foster was not convicted of anything after the two claimed they simply had a close relationship. As for Donahue, although most people see the call logs as overwhelming evidence of his involvement with illegal gambling, he only received two charges of conspiracy before serving 11 months in prison. As to the potential involvement of referees other than Donahue, I think Gilbert Arenas may have said it the best. The biggest mistake the feds made was letting David Stern know there might be other refs that we're looking into. David Stern said, oh, you're not going to ruin us. Ga gangsta, leak it out. Donahue is cooperating. He's going to help us. And you're like, oh, okay. Hey, feds caught Donahue. What'd that make you do? Oh no, oh, deny, deny. Foster seemed to walk away scot-free and slid under the radar without even receiving any punishment or public criticism by the NBA. On top of that, at this point, Foster began seeing even more officiating opportunities, even in more high state games. But while Foster continued to develop into a beloved referee by the NBA, it seemed that he began making some enemies. Most notably, star point guard Chris Paul found a disdain in him early in his career. You may have even seen the recent 2023 altercation between Scott Foster and Chris Paul, but you might not know that this rivalry dates almost two decades back. CP3 entered the NBA in 2005, and in one of the first games that the New Orleans Hornets with rookie CP were blown out, guess who was the referee? Yes, Scott Foster. And since that regular season game in 2005, Chris Paul has bumped heads with Scott Foster time and time again on the court. Not saying that their bad-blooded feud began in Paul's rookie season, but this is very possible considering Chris Paul's antagonistic tendencies, also with Foster's infamous attitude. But what soon followed this blowout defeat seemed to be the turning event in this strange player and referee dynamic. It began with Chris Paul 
finally gaining recognition as a top point guard in the league in his third season, which saw CP3 make his first playoff push for the Hornets. After making it past the first round, the Hornets were up against the reigning NBA champions, the Spurs. And after a back and forth series, a game seven would come. And guess who was assigned as a referee? Yes, Scott Foster, again. Without any overwhelmingly obvious bad calls, the Hornets lost in the end, 91 to 82. As time went on, Chris Paul made a move to the Clippers and didn't have much postseason success. But when Chris Paul moved to the Houston Rockets to accompany James Harden, this may have been the peak of the player ref rivalry and their feud would finally go public. After a regular season game in 2018, Paul had choice words to say about Scott Foster. I got a take tonight. Yeah, Scott Foster at his time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Never fails. But it wasn't until the playoffs when this seemingly bad blooded feud was taken to the next level. In 2018, Harden led the Houston Rockets with CP, making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. And as they would go up against the Warriors, in Game 7, you guessed it, Scott Foster was assigned to officiate the game again. And this is how it turned out. He was looking for a foul on Bell. Mike D'Antoni upset and should have gotten it. I mean, you got to protect the shooter for a second. You tell me if there's any contact here. Yes. Yes. And the airspace up under also. He got fouled up top and up under. They are in their grill. Chris Harden way off. Another foul. He should have gotten back to back plays where James Harden, in my opinion, was fouled. Yes. It began with two significant calls that were missed early on, as the Rockets still had a significant advantage they were looking to build on, with six potential free throws right there. And the bad calls kept coming. And it just seemed like the officials wanted the Warriors to win that night, no matter how absurd the call or non-call. After countless obvious calls missed, the Warriors would win Game 7, and despite many fans and analysts calling for Foster to be investigated, his position as a top ref in the NBA remained untouched. Many fans believed that the Houston Rockets were well and truly robbed in this game. Although it seemed like just a Chris Paul and Foster rivalry, did these questionable decisions go beyond just the hatred for Chris Paul? Or was there a deeper motive by not just Foster, but potentially even the NBA? It's also important to note that in the 25 playoff games that this Houston team played in two seasons, Scott Foster ended up refing six of those 25 games. And in the end, Houston went 0-6. And considering Foster was assigned on quite a few Game 7s, fans were slowly starting to catch on to these strange officiating patterns. In the bubble season, now with Chris Paul in the playoffs with the OKC Thunder, in a first round matchup against the Rockets, the series led to a Game 7. And as you may expect, Foster was again assigned to officiate the game. During pre-game, it was later revealed that Scott Foster had reminded Chris Paul that he officiated his first Game 7, referencing to how Foster was the one who officiated Game 7 between the Hornets and the Spurs in 2011. A strange thing to say to a player, that's for sure. Anyways, this Game 7 would go down to the wire, and with just over one second of the game remaining, Foster made another one of his controversial calls, this time calling for a foul when a timeout was clearly called prior, and Chris Paul's team got the rough end of the stick once again. We could have won the game, but that situation, league no. Like. In the following season, CP3 was moved to the Phoenix Suns, and the postseason saw them exceed expectations of many, especially considering it was Paul's first year in Phoenix. Matter of fact, the Suns made it all the way to Game 6 of the 2021 NBA Finals against the Bucks, And with the Suns trailing 3-2 in the series, Scott Foster was assigned to officiate the must-win game for the Suns. And as we know, Milwaukee would win Game 6 before taking home the championship. Although Milwaukee probably deserved the victory, having an NBA player's arch-nemesis ref, who's also been voted as the worst ref, to be assigned on one of the most important games of the entire season. This seems like a calculated move from above and a questionable decision to say the least. Now, looking at the present day, Scott Foster has officiated a total of 20 games that Chris Paul has played in the playoffs. And in those 20 games, CP3 has only won three of them. 
despite Paul's team being favourites in 15 of those games. And on the contrary, in games where Foster is not the referee, Chris Paul has a record of 73 wins to 56 losses. That brings the playoff total record of Paul to 76 wins and 73 losses with Foster. A stark contrast. Although some may claim this is just a coincidence, these numbers are simply too alarming to look past. And this is what Stephen A had to say about it. You're not favoring in 15 of 20 games and you're going 3-17 and 17 and it has nothing to do with the officiating. That's not an accident. That's too big, too glaring of a coincidence to ignore. After another recent encounter, resulting in a quick double technical from Scott Foster to Chris Paul, in the postgame, Paul again acknowledges the personal nature of his relationship with Foster. Chris Paul also claimed that during the game, Foster talked about his son, before confirming this in the postgame. Yeah, we had a situation some years ago, and it's personal. The league know, everybody knows, it's been a meeting and all that, and it's just a situation with my son, and so it's... And Paul even mentioned that he had a mediated conversation with Foster before. However, the issues between the two certainly still persist. Well, it's not just Chris Paul either. Even Harden claimed Foster shouldn't be allowed to officiate Rockets games anymore, and characterised Foster as rude and arrogant, saying he couldn't even have a conversation with him during the game. Paul Pierce also spoke out against Foster's unfriendly demeanour, quickness to call technicals and overall arrogance, with many others calling it out on court with Foster as a referee. But this makes sense, because since 2016, for seven straight seasons, Scott Foster was voted as the worst ref in the league by players. Considering this background, the persistent question emerges, how is Scott Foster still allowed to officiate in the NBA? Although most people see the biased, seemingly corrupt nature of Foster's decision making, a bigger question arises. Is Scott Foster just a puppet? And is he acting on behalf of the NBA to potentially extend playoff series? Now as a referee that has made countless emotional decisions, letting his personal biases get in the way of officiating, you'd think that the NBA would have punished him in some kind of way. But no. The NBA has done precisely nothing to crack down on Foster's antics. As a matter of fact, they may just be capitalising on his officiating and may even be the puppet masters behind the scenes. Let me explain. Other than the longtime Chris Paul beef, Scott Foster, the extender, has famously been known to be assigned in crucial games to extend the series, and is often seemingly in favour of the team that generates more money for the NBA. But is this actually true? Over the years, Scott Foster has been assigned to numerous Game 7s in not only games with Chris Paul, but many other important games. More recently, in the 2023 playoffs, Foster officiated Game 7 of the playoff series between the Kings and the Warriors, which was a first round series that went to 7 games. I'm sure the Warriors' first round exit would have been terrible for the NBA's pockets. In the same playoffs, voted as the NBA's worst ref, Scott Foster, and second worst ref, Tony Brothers, were assigned on Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals between Boston and Miami. Miami dominated the game in a blowout win, but the question remains, in such an important game, why are the two worst referees officiating? Another notable game includes Game 6 of the 2016 NBA Finals between the Warriors and Cavs. When the Cavs were down 3-2, Foster was assigned on the game and he was not shy in giving Steph Curry multiple soft fouls before he fouled out of the game completely. Love on the follow and he's fouled. That would be number four on Curry. Stolen by Curry, but a reach and foul. That's five on Curry. And a foul on Curry, and Curry's gonna get it with a technical. He throws his mouthpiece after fouling out of the game. First time he's fouled out since December 2013. This extended the extremely close Game 6 to a Game 7, where the Cavs ultimately won. Strange, right? Fans and media even began catching on to this trend. In the prior 2022 postseason, Foster was assigned to ref the Eastern Conference Semi-Finals Game 6 when Milwaukee Bucks held a 3-2 lead over the Boston Celtics. And many people including Bill Simmons believe this was a guaranteed victory for Boston based on Foster's presence. However, right before the game, 
Seemingly after public Twitter grew suspicions of the extender being used too obviously, the NBA decided to take Foster off the match. Regardless, the Celtics still won Game 6, then proceeded to win Game 7 to reach the NBA Finals. The scarier thing is that these are just some of countless examples that Foster has been assigned to very important Game 6 or 7s in the postseason. That said, the media tends to keep this topic under wraps, speaking only highly of their beloved referee. Just listen to how Brian Windhurst speaks on Scott Foster. So Scott Foster is one of the most valuable officials the NBA has. And the reason he is is because he will make any call anywhere against anybody at any time. His ego is probably what enables him to be such a good official. But we have seen this repeatedly throughout his illustrious officiating career. As well as this commentator during the pregame. An interesting long discussion, Scott Foster. And Chris Paul, Foster, one of the top rated and most respected officials for years in his 22nd finals game, but he is not Chris Paul's favorite official. These statements praising Foster are not only far from true, but exposes the extent of the cover up. Regardless, the motives of the NBA seem clear. In attempt to generate the most money, especially come playoff time, they bring in the extender among potentially other puppets to do so, putting the integrity of the game out the window. But the truth is, this has probably been going on for a very long time. And it's not just Scott Foster acting on his own. It shines a light on the entire operation of the NBA as a business. With all things considered, although the majority of NBA games seem to be legitimately officiated, it still seems there is a stage aspect to the officiating system itself, in an attempt to alter outcomes to further specific storylines or monetary agendas. Regardless, the NBA will likely keep doing what they're doing to keep us watching and entertained. As for Scott Foster, it's no secret that he's one of the NBA's most reliable puppet referees.